I, wa I wanted to talk about uh, your experience of, of going to the seventh hill to the mountain. Oh uh, yeah. Yes, sure. because you know the ashram is in the middle of the of the wild mountains, surrounded by mountains, yeah. and there is this one uh, seventh hill where um, it's said that um, Sadhguru, in his last life, as uh, Sadhguru Sri Brahma. For those who don't know, um, he he left his body there on top of the hill through all of mm -hmm. his seven chakras and um, which is why he's called the uh, Chakresh Vara. And um, there is a 42 day sadhana happening at the Isha Yoga Center called Shivanga, which is just limp of Shiva. And so you do um, Shiva Namaskar and you, yeah. you, you eat only after 12, right? After 12, yeah. And uh, you yeah, take... It's, uh... you, yeah, you, you take the honey with the um, pepper, 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 yeah, and, and, the, uh, and the leaves, neem yeah. leaves, right? Neem in leaves, the morning, yeah. instead of instead of your meal, and also you soak peanuts. Yeah, totally. And yeah, yeah. I, I just whatever. Uh, if you want to share, it, please, because for me it was like a life changing experience. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was also a very uh, deep uh, experience. Um, so, I, so as I said before, I feel like uh, when I do something physical for a certain time, then uh, things can happen. And uh, it was uh, this was actually really uh, like uh, something very physical. So there is a restriction of food, uh, and then you you can only eat uh, a few things in the morning. So for a very long time, you don't eat at all, uh, like from the evening till the the next uh, lunch, which is uh, actually I never did that before. So for me, it was quite something like the first few days or the first, uh, let's say, two weeks, something. Uh, it's still like uh, you're, you really want to go to eat in the morning, but you have to wait. <laughs> and uh, this is really uh, breaking limitations, is really working on you. Huh? This is really working on you. So, uh, but uh, after 30, 30 days or something, uh, it starts to be so smooth and like you just uh, prepare your meal and you put it aside um, when other people eat and then uh, you come back uh, at lunchtime. Uh, yeah, at 12 uh, and you can start eating and it starts to be very, uh, you're, you're really um, uh, detaching from from food and from this uh, compulsion. Yeah, it's, uh, I felt like... Uh, I don't really care about what I eat anymore, if it tastes good, if it's enough, or uh, as long as I put something in my body, so <laughs> it felt okay. And uh, so uh, it was really, um, <clears throat> really a de detachment from, from food. Uh, and then you do that for, yeah, you do that and some uh, other little yogic processes uh, like uh, yoga namas, uh, no, shiva sure. namaskar. Yeah. Which is absolutely absolutely powerful as well. Yes, it's uh, crazy. It's like yeah. when I saw it the first time, I was like, "What is this? What are these people doing? This is some crazy stuff, you know." But yeah. once I once I did it myself, I was like, "Wow, it's a simple process." And it's very just, simple, and but it, it feels so it's good. Fire, like, yeah. yes, yes, absolutely, yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, so How was the hike? In the I was going up. You know, and, and yeah, be, uh, the being up was, there. So um, uh, it was the second time I went up. Uh, the first time uh, was uh, the, the first time I went to India. I went uh, with uh, shoes, and oh. uh, this time, that time, uh, second time, I went barefoot because I had already uh, some experience with walking barefoot throughout the ashram for months. So I thought, okay, maybe I can try. Because I know my feet are like not Indian feet. Uh, <laughs> we're not used to walking barefoot everywhere, right? So after a few months of walking barefoot, I thought, okay, maybe I can give it a try to go barefoot, like totally uh, like it should be done. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it went uh, pretty okay. Uh, no really bad uh, cuts or anything. Uh, it was pretty cold on the top. Uh, and I remember, yeah, I was actually sick <coughs> going up the hill. I don't know what happened, but uh, yeah, 
still uh, made it. <laughs> something still, was wrong. He still yeah, made it. Uh, it was raining. Uh, and it, it was really a uh, physical, uh, yeah. Uh, fi- yeah, like because I had to fight this uh, disease and I was walking up and it was uh, really hard. And there was at some point, there was like, I don't know, 100 kilometers per hour wind, like something really crazy. I was, uh, <laughs> should I quit or not? Should I don't know what I should do. Then I, I met uh, one guy and uh, like, I kind of compared myself to this mm. person. I was like, but this guy, uh, it was like, yeah, this guy is uh, like fat. He doesn't look very fit. And I'm going to quit like because I was co- I was starting to come down. And uh, I'm going to quit. And this guy is just uh, continuing. And he's telling me, oh, why are you quitting? You should come with me. I was really like, Man, what am I doing? <laughs> so I just, uh, I just thought, okay, I just, I don't quit anymore. I come back and uh, I go up the hill with him, and uh, so I just, uh, I finished it. Yeah, and um, um, nothing special really happened on top. But uh, I remember just one thing is the, at um, uh, maybe quite close to the the top, you can uh, take a dip in a in a river. And uh, that river is like super cold, <laughs> but it re- like fired me up like, wow, incredibly yeah. as well. And yeah. uh, at the same moment, I thought uh, I was really struggling and uh, they told me it was uh, almost to the end. Like uh, mm-hmm. I thought we were like third hill and uh, they told me oh, it's already sixth or something and yeah, fi- like, what? yeah. <laughs> fifth or sixth yeah mm. so it really gave me a lot of energy to finish and um, uh, and then uh, it was already time to go down after maybe 30 minutes on the on the mm. top at the top and this was uh, really hard because your feet are quite uh, tired and actually it was more more the legs that were uh, like uh, so tired to go down step after step and uh, yeah once uh, I reached the bottom I was like wow this was really tough <laughs> the way down I there is so many so many stairs so did you feel a change afterwards like once you break all of these limitations with your body and your mind you know well actually uh, it's uh, when I entered the ashram just after <clears throat> so I really felt um, yeah, like a, like a, I don't know something like energetic or mm. uh, it was very very clear to me and uh, uh, it was like a, some sort of cocoon of energy when wow. I entered the ashram after this walk and um, <clears throat> it was very very deep. Um, I, was, I was really touched by uh, the whole process. Uh, yeah, it was really something. Uh, Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. But, yeah. For so, me, for me, it was also very intense. Now, when I look at it, I broke so many limitations with my body when I went up. You know, mm-hmm. I was just like you. I was going barefoot, but I was like, oh my God, this hurts. It's, this is so hard. And, and then I saw people next to me who were not, yeah. probably not doing any yoga, you know, but they were just <laughs> going. They were go- just going, going. And, and they were chanting, you know, they were chanting while they were going. Uh, and, and I was like, do you know, like, if these people can make it, why, why would I not be able to make it, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, and yeah. the same, the same thing that you said happened. I just like, I was just like, okay, I'll just, I'm just going to chant. And I really lost myself in the chant. I really mm. lost like, uh, where, where am I going? Where, how long is it going to take? I just like, really throw, threw myself into uh, into the chant and by chanting I, I, I made it up there yeah and I remember um, after after so much activity after really you know feeling tired you know physically tired uh, once you sit down up there I, I felt it was like uh, really easy to fall into meditation because you were physically uh. so exhausted that you yeah. were just like ready to settle down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
for me, it was quite busy up there. So for me, uh, mm. I was a little bit uh, annoyed by uh, oh, yes, yes. all the activity. But um, it was when I came back to the ashram that, yeah. uh, wow, you have this, uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but this uh, energy thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I do understand. It's, it's kind of when you visit the Surya Kund, you know, you get into the cold water, mm. um, and and after that, you if you go into the the Analinga or any temple, then you feel a difference, you know. And so the same thing maybe happened on that day. It was raining. You were cold, you know, and then a lot of physical activity, and then yeah. also going out of the ashram. Because we didn't go out, right? We were yeah, we didn't yeah yeah yeah. So hey, for for a long time we didn't. Yeah. It's called Wellingiri because uh, Wellingiri literally means uh, either white mountain or silver mountain, but it's all green. So why it's referred to as Wellingiri Mountain is uh, almost ten months of the year, the peak of the mountain will always be the cloud. And it looks silvery from here, it's called Silver Mountain or White Mountain. So these mountains are not just mountains for us, for me, it's like a whole large temple for me. It radiates a certain other dimension, if you're willing. This is much, much more than just stone and earth. This has imbibed a certain sense of energy and a certain sense of knowing. This is generally here known as the Kailash of the South. You need not know anything, it'll just blow you out. Because there are just a few places on the whole planet which have witnessed that kind of event where a being leaves through all his seven chakras. There is no temple up there, there are just three rocks simply standing, huge ones, about uh, twenty-five, thirty feet tall rocks, three of them just standing like that. Beneath that space is the temple. There is no built temple there. And uh, every year almost a million people go up in the season, in the nights. We want to open this up in a big way, not just going up as pilgrimage, we want to attach sadhana to it. See, whatever you wish to do, if you want to transform yourself, a certain energy base is needed. Otherwise, it'll be an uphill task. All you have to do is look up and be receptive to it, that's all. When such a energy basis is available, this is the kind of energy which can be a base for a whole spiritual revolution which can go through the country or through the world. This is not an exhaustible kind, it's an inexhaustible kind. After touching it, you cannot help being naturally spiritual in some sense. So, uh, we're seeing how to build a needed infrastructure where people can come and we can give them the necessary tools, go through forty to forty-eight days of sadhana before they go up, some simple sadhana which everybody can do and they can go up and reap, become absorbed by this energy or at least absorb a little bit of that energy. Sivanga means uh, to become an anga. You know what's an anga? A limb of Shiva. You're anyway limb of Shiva, okay? Shiva means that which is not. That which is not is the maximum presence in the cosmos. That which is is a small happening. So when we say Shiva, we are referring to that which is not. The huge body of that which is not, has a few limbs 
Now one may be a galaxy, another may be a star, another may be a solar system, another may be a planet, another may be an atom, another may be you. But all these are just limbs of Shiva, isn't it? Because everything has come from nothing. You are a limb of Shiva, but you are living without that awareness. So the sadhana is structured in such a way to bring this into your awareness. The nature of human existence is such, whatever you are not conscious of does not even exist for you, isn't it? So a whole process which lasts for about forty-two days is set up so that you go through this whole process to come to that experience, establish this in your life that you are actually a limb of Shiva. Only because you think you are an exist existence by yourself, you are a unique piece of existence, not connected to anything around you or anybody around you, that is why suffering, that is why loneliness, that is why struggle, that is why fear, isn't it? If you become truly separate, you will fall dead, you will cease to exist. Your existence is possible only because of the connection. But how unfortunate, when you are connected with something so tremendous, not being conscious of it, not knowing it, not experiencing the joy of it, I think it's a crime. So Shivanga is just to avoid that crime. So this is a fundamental process which is set up to create the right ambience in you. If you walk into the sunlight, everybody does not receive the same amount of life. If they breathe, everybody does not absorb the same amount of oxygen. If they eat, everybody does not absorb the same amount of nutrients, simply because of the type of ambience you set within yourself. So the Shivanga sadhana is about setting that ambience so that whatever else you do, you have a fundamental basis so that everything prospers on this platform. Or in other words, you are building a spiritual platform for yourself so that whatever else you do upon it works well. <laughs>